Hello everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. I'm Zelda Master 2010 and in this episode we're going to be doing some more side quests as well as heading to the second palace in the game. So let's go ahead and get on our way and to start things off we're going to head over up here in Kakariko Village and head inside this hideout like place and let's go ahead and talk to this person right here. Yo Link, this house used to be the hideout for a gang of thieves. What was the leader's name? Oh yeah, his name was Blind and really hated bright light. Okay, I guess because he was becoming blind. I don't, I don't really know, but what a weird name and he hates lights. So that kind of sucks. I guess because he's a thief, he's a dark person. But anyways, down here in the basement room of the thieves hideout thing, uh, there's a bunch of chests. Now, obviously you'll be able to pick up every single one easily but there is a way to pick them all up at the same time now you only can move one of these silver blocks once as you can tell see i can't move it anymore or even drag it back to reset it just head upstairs but i'll try to do it to where you can open every single chest easily so i believe i already screwed no no i didn't screw it up uh i believe this is how we're gonna do it uh we're gonna go ahead and Push this down, then this right here, then this right there, and then this like that. And there we go, yeah, we have access to all of them. Alright, not so not too hard. It's really simple, actually. And I'm, I believe there's other ways to do it. I'm not completely sure if this is the only way to do it. This is just what came up in my mind while trying to solve the puzzle. So anyways, a bunch of red rupees, and let's go ahead and ram into this wall over here. Actually, that technique doesn't work on this type of wall. You're going to have to go ahead and place a bomb, but whatever. Once you do that, wait for it to explode and head inside this gaping hole. And let's see what's at inside this chest. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, it is a piece of heart. Now, one more piece so we can get a full-fledged heart container. That's what we want, guys. We want a heart container because they help us. They give us an extra life. They give us more power and other stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and make our way out of here. And I believe that's everything we want to do here in Kakariko Village right now. So we can make our way out of here and start roaming in the lands of Hyrule and see other stuff to do as well. Head, you know, head to the next palace and stuff. So let's go ahead and make our way down here south of Kakariko Village. You're going to have to make your way here actually to head to the next palace. And you have to head inside this room that's filled with books and you want to go ahead and use your Pegasus boots to go ahead and smash this uh, shelf right here and it will drop a book and now you found the book of Medora you can use it to read the ancient language of Hylia alright so this is gonna help us out in an upcoming event obviously like I said it has something to do with the second palace so alright anyways also what we want to do is head inside this room right here, and we can go ahead and use our Pegasus boots to ram into this wall and break it. I'm sure, this guy doesn't care, nor does this guy. They're looking at us when we turn this way, but he he's fine. He's fine with uh, breaking walls and stuff. So let's go ahead and talk to this trick. If you can reach the goal within 50, 50, 15 seconds, uh, we will give you something good. Ready, set, go. All right, so you actually have 15 seconds, and there's no timer displayed on the screen, but it's counting. So you want to make sure you make it to the end of this area as fast as possible and the easiest way to do it is having the Pixis boots and running across that huge area of you know tall bush grass and stuff and there we go so we qualify to pick up this piece of heart and now we got a new heart container and there we go we got another heart in our life gauge so that's gonna help us out a lot and now what we're gonna want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and show off the map we're gonna want to head to the next pendant which is over here obviously and the next palace so what we want to do is make our way there now we can't easily run our way down here and head down to you know the area where the palace is you're gonna have to make your way to where your house is and walk down from here now there is some spot right here that looks like you can actually walk through but it's blocked and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second so let's go ahead and make our way to that area uh, the map is actually extremely helpful to know where to go and stuff and the the game isn't really that hard to like maneuver and stuff so anyways I think the only hard part is avoiding these enemies so I'm gonna kill this guy because I don't like him or we'll just leave him because it seems to be that he doesn't want to die so anyways yeah this is what I was talking about if you go ahead and hit L again yeah it's blocked so we can't really go there alright so I, th I think this guy has one more hit to die I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill him if he lets me alright what it like reset 
Because I'm sure they only take three hits, not freaking six or five or however many of those were. But anyways, here's our house. You can easily save and quit and restart out the house if you didn't want to walk this way. But we got like the Book of Medora and other stuff. So we kind of needed to make our way around the land and stuff. So yeah, whatever. Uh, make your way down here and continue on your quest to the second palace. It's actually really simple. Let's, let's try not to get hit. But then again, if you do get hit a lot and you're afraid to enter the palace with barely any life, you don't have to worry because there's a fairy up ahead and stuff. So anyways, here's the guy you can't really do anything to right now. He just says dots and if you're going to talk to this, I'm just an average guy. Don't speak to me. Don't remove this sign. We can't even remove it to begin with. So whatever, we'll just ignore him and try to avoid that crow. And let's go ahead and side this area and there's a uh, fairy fountain so yeah we actually uh, stumbled upon one of these in the previous episode as well and I actually healed off of it and I didn't mention it but yeah fairy fountains you can easily heal now I believe if you run straight like this yeah I calculate it perfectly it's a little bit off the edge and you just run straight and we made it inside of this area which believe it or not has something pretty special and so let's go ahead and talk to this guy and you're like aha it is the Book of Medora with it. Or, aha, it is the Book of Medora. Oh, oh, because it's a period, my bad. With it, you can read the language of the Hylian people. Yeah, that's what it said when we picked it up. So, thank you for the info, but we already knew that. Go ahead and explode this cracked wall over here. And this guy has been hiding a piece of heart. Why would you do that, even though you're giving us knowledge about the Book of Medora, even though we clearly know what it does, because stuff so I hate you but yeah let's go and leave this old man uh, and head over to where the palace is so it's somewhere in this sandy sand you just want to go ahead and run your way to it it'll you'll find like a shrine platform thing that you can walk up so yeah, you want to make your way to it and here we are so if you go ahead and click right here it just has a bunch of gibberish that we can't read so let's go ahead and take out the book of Medora and use it to open the way forward, make your wish, and it will be grounded, granted. So, I believe you only can make one wish. Now, I wish for a lollipop, but Link is a dick, and he wishes to progress because, well, he has dependent of courage, and he's not afraid of anything right now. So, with that, we're gonna all go. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and open up this, which takes us to the second palace in the game. So let's go ahead and head inside. And this is the Desert Palace. Not the West Palace. Though it would kind of fit because it does have a Western theme. But it isn't that. So anyways, there's a BMO right here that likes to shoot you and stuff. So we're going to try to ignore that. Now, this palace is pretty easy if you know where to go. There's a lot of rooms and it's kind of confusing. But once you know what to do, it's pretty straightforward. Now to start things off, go ahead and make your way all the way over here. Try to avoid this BMO. Now, if the BMO does spot you, you can at least stand behind a torch and you will avoid it. And yeah, it won't shoot you like that. And then wait for it to spin around. So they're pretty annoying. They're actually really strong. They knock you back and uh, take a heart. So you kind of want to avoid that. Anyways, I don't know why I walked around like this. You want to go ahead and turn back, do some more backtracking to where we were at, which I believe was down here. But let's continue. Or I'm not completely sure. Yeah, it was. So make your way down here though, to like basically to the opposite side of where you were, and unlock the door with the key you just picked up, and let's go ahead and kill all of these creatures, and try to avoid the beam. I think the beam was the biggest problem in this uh, palace, because it shoots, and it's scary and things, and I'm going to try to stay ahead. Oh wow, I don't know how I got hit by touching, I don't even believe that was a thing. But it is, so whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and make our way and dash through this area like this with your Pegasus boots and pick up the big key. So you're already uh, given the big key and you want to run through like this again but actually hit these balls without paying attention. I should have waited for them to shoot and then run with my Pegasus boots, but whatever. Now what we want to do is once again backtrack to the previous room we were in or near the previous room we were in so let's go ahead and run all the way to the opposite side once again luckily with the pegasus boots it's fairly easy and go ahead and head inside this door right here and then what you want to do is not get hit by that you can easily like juke it and in this 
uh, pot there is that. So, oh god, oh god. I'm gonna die, because I'm stuck. Okay. Holy crap! Okay, we're gonna have to juke this. Okay, we're fine. Let's hope we can make it inside here and not die yet. Alright, so we're good. Go ahead and open up this, and we got the power glove. God, I got really unlucky there. I believe I'm gonna die once I head out or something. Or something like that. Okay, so we were able to juke it, but we need to go ahead and step on the switch once more. Hopefully we'll find a heart. We did. We found one, though, but we just lost it. That's great. And I keep stepping on this on accident. Let's try to race around it. Holy crap! Okay, we made it out. Whew. I believe we can find a heart easily around here. Let's just see if we can make it to it. And we're gonna have to kill this right here and this as well. Please drop a heart, thank you. All right. So th there was an area to where you could have picked up some fairies and stuff, but I ignored that. And yeah, I'm trying to be really strong and not die. But yeah, make your way down here. You actually wanna go down here. It's not just that I'm looking for hearts. Holy crap, what am I doing? I'm hit away. Die, die. Yay, two pieces of hearts. See, the game is nice sometimes. You want to make your way over here, ignore this BMO. What? It still hit me? That's bullcrap. But make your way out here. Now, if I do die, it will spawn me back in. It will spawn me right outside, so I don't have to worry. All right, so what we want to do is now that we do have the power glove, we can pick up these types of rocks that we couldn't pick up before without it and make our way inside here. Now this this area is the last area of the palace. Now I just walked out because I'm afraid I'm gonna die. So, yeah, make sure you don't die in this area. Okay, so, these statues, wait, yeah, okay, I got you. These statues actually block the BMO's hits as well. Go ahead and make your way through here, push that switch, and make your way up here, and you're gonna find platforms that will hit you. So, now I just open an endless waste of time. I could have easily avoided it if I kept running, but now most likely I will get hit if I don't kill all of these. So we're just gonna stand here, that way I can, you know, search through the pots and hopefully, uh... Yeah, okay, so I got hit. Never mind. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I died. <laughs> I think that was for the best of us. I don't know I was standing there doing that, but yeah, so I died. Let's go ahead and continue without saving and get back in this room. Now we don't have just one piece of heart and we can easily head through this area with these. So I do still have the key that was inside this pot right here. And once you do pick up the key, run inside the next room without really thinking of what to do next. And yeah, let's continue. So, Oh god, I'm gonna get hit, aren't I? No, I'm not. Okay, so we got we have to kill all of these enemies as well as avoiding the BMO. The BMO gives me a lot of trouble, I'm just gonna say that. Like, seriously. It does a lot of damage and it's constantly spinning and you can't even do anything to it right now, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take out my arrow because we are gonna need that in just a bit. And I'm just gonna snipe... Okay, so I can't hit him from there. Apparently this... Uh, statue blocks everything. Sight of the BMO. BMO's beams and other stuff. Okay, so now, yeah. Okay, so now they're just throwing stuff at me. We, what you have to do is grab the key that's right here. Please be nice to me. I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, grab the key that's right here and make your way to this room. And there's another crazy thing in this room. Now, the next key is over here. So let's go ahead and pick it up and head inside this room without dying. Holy crap, what is up with this game? Alright, so there's some pieces of heart here. These are the only two pieces of heart I know of. So, yeah. Oh god. Okay, we killed him and he dropped a piece of heart. That guy's pretty nice. Let's see if there's anything else. Nope. Great, thank you, game. I want some more hearts. We do have two bottles, though, so we could have stored something inside it. It is my fault. But once you do that, everybody... Wait for this wall to disappear by, yeah, you just want to light the torches and this wall will push to the left and a door will act, be act, well, not really be activated, but a door will appear and you don't need any ordinary key because you can tell we don't even have a key slot. We need our big key that we picked up to unlock this door and we already have the big key. That's how we got the item, which is known as the power gauntlet. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, enter inside here. Now uh, I'm honestly scared because I don't know what's gonna happen when I head inside and if I die 
that'd be pretty dumb on my part, but whatever. So anyways, here is Land Molus, I believe that is, that's what it's known as. So, as you can tell, once it sprouts out of the sand, it shoots these small bits of rocks that you want to avoid, as well as if you touch it, it hits you. That's basically where all of its damage comes from. It's relatively easy, but it's really long and kind of tedious to kill, and as you can tell, I got hit by it. So what you want to do is hope he actually uh, sprouts out and walks towards your direction like this, and then that way you can get a couple hits on him. Now what you want to do, the easiest way to actually land hits on this guy is to uh, start attacking once, like right before he comes out of the grass. Uh, not the grass, the sand, wow. Yeah, the grass. This is clearly grass, because that's what I see. Even though I live in like one of the greenest states in the US, I believe. Well, I'm not sure, I'm just assuming, because there's a lot of grass where I live, so yeah. Make up my own stuff. Anyways, oh god. We want to we wanna not die and try to hit him as much as possible. This is kind of easy, but the thing is he takes so much hits. He, like, he can sure pack a punch, let me tell you that. And Alright, we killed one. It gets a lot easier once you kill the first one, I believe. So, yeah, two more left. I don't know how, if I've been hitting all of them a good amount of times, but let's hope the case is yes. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, okay, so we kill the second one, actually. Now, wait, okay, so this is where it gets harder. It gets a lot harder, because now he's going to be shooting at several one of, like, of those rocks when he, like, jumps out of the sand. So you're going to want to kind of pay attention as well as not die, but you want to try to kill it as soon as possible before it gets a little bit out of control. And yeah, I did pause just to explain that, because I don't think I'd be able to do that without it. I don't know why I have so much trouble with games like this, but yeah. But let's go ahead and get started, all right? So... I'm not scared, and I believe if you quickly spam B, you can, av no, I couldn't avoid the other rock, but yeah, so he shoots more rocks, let's see if we can get another hit on him with avoiding it, we weren't, but we did avoid the rock, we, but we weren't able to get a hit on him, I believe you have to stand like this, that way you can avoid it once you hit him, because you do get knocked back a little bit when you do hit him, and oh wow, that was actually really easy, holy crap, but yeah, so we were able to avoid everything and pick up this, so I did die once, and it's really sad that that happened, but... I don't know, I couldn't really avoid that. Like I said before in the last episode, I believe, I tend to die more often or be at really low hearts and stuff on older Zelda games because it's more challenging in the fights rather than the puzzles. The puzzles are really easy to solve, it's just a lot harder to fight because, well, it's a top-down perspective and you're only limited to do so much. I mean, we can't even walk like sideways or diagonally. But sideways is like this, I believe. Yeah, you can't walk like diagonal, as you can see. We'll, we'll just zigzag our way, but whatever. I'm not going to make up excuses. I died, so whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up this. And, well, guys, this is the next pendant. Let's see what's it called. It's pretty obvious what it is, because we got the power gauntlet. So this is going to be, you won the pendant of power. Your goal of finding all three pendants is in sight. Go for the last one. All right, thank you, Pendant, talking to me. But yeah, I guess that wraps up this episode. In the next episode, we're hopefully not going to die. And look for the final Pendant. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Goodbye, everybody. Woo!